we are live on YouTube. Let me go ahead and start the recording on my end real quick. We are recording on my end. We're live on YouTube. All right. And this is going to be, let's see here, Male Entrepreneur Podcast. Episode number 127 already. We're getting up there, man. It's wow. been two, two and a bit years. Wow. All right. We're live in three, two. All right. Welcome back to The Male Entrepreneur, the podcast for men who win with your host, Pradeep Sangha, and a very special guest today. Pradeep, how you doing, man? I'm doing awesome, man. I'm doing great. This will this will be fun. This will be a good episode. We got the mini lion with us today, my younger brother, Harge. So uh, I, I thought I'd bring him on here because him and I always have a good banter every once in a while. So yeah, as you can see, if you're looking at the camera, he's uh, he's the, uh, you can say the guy that's well put together. He's got the shirt on. He's a professional. Uh, so we always joke around, but I thought it'd be a good chance for us to talk about the topic of brotherhood and just kind of chill out and have a casual conversation since him and I don't get to see each other very much. And this is his opportunity to kind of show his face in the limelight a little bit as well. Is it, uh, is it too early to have a beer while we have this discussion? <laughs> yeah. Well, since, since people listen whenever they want to be listening. If they want to tap into it. All right. Well, thanks yeah. for having me. I, I, I like the topic. I'm excited. So, uh, how does this thing traditionally kick off pretty uh, or Nathan do you guys start off with a monologue or what's the uh, what's the protocols here man we just have a conversation that's all it's about and you know you're gonna get to get to, you're gonna get to know my brother a little bit here we're gonna throw some jabs back and forth but Harge is like the formal guy he's the guy that likes to have everything put together um, as as you can see and I'm kind of like let's let's just fly with it so Harge man let's just have a good conversation so um What's your day like so far? You, th you threw me a picture this morning and told me that you were a part of the 5 a.m. club. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as, as we share the same father, uh, we definitely were raised with um, the mentality that if you want it, you got to go out and get it. You know, no one's going to hand it to you. So you got to get up before everybody else. And that's at the crack of dawn. And there's, there's a lot to be said about people that get up early to attack their day. Um, you know, you start off with meditation, you put in a hard day's worth of work and you'll be rewarded for it later in your day. And that's just kind of how I try to live most of my days is to get up before the average person and uh, just get at it, whether that's a, a mental exercise, a physical exercise uh, with my career, with my studies, whatever it is. So it's a it's a good way to to kind of center your energy of what needs to be accomplished in the day. But, you know, we, that doesn't come new to you, Pradeep. I know you you were on this 5 a 5 a.m. club well before I was, but uh, we do share a common denominator of where we get that from. Our, our, our dad was very, very vocal on that, that if you want to see success, you have to get up and work harder than the average person. Well, I think kind of helped too, growing up in an orchard, being forced to get up at like four o'clock just to get your butt out there so you can start picking cherries or doing whatever. So it's not necessarily that we had a choice. We were kind of forced into it from that standpoint, right? <laughs> so it's nice to say that we picked up on, on it through their habits, but you know, there's a little bit of it was say, you know, get your ass up, get to work. Otherwise you're going to get a beat down. But uh, I, I get where you're, you're coming from, bro. So how's, how's things with you? So if, for those of you who don't know, my brother is actually expecting, um, they're expecting the first child coming out, uh, coming out. Uh, yeah. That's one way to put it. Um, <laughs> it's not like it's a book. I'm, I'm so into the book release that I'm like, yeah, you know, what's going to be released on, you know, August 31st. I think that's the date, right? Harge? Yeah, August 30th. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and Nathan, in case you're wondering, what's what's the uh, you know, what's the reason behind the facial hair here? It's not a COVID beard. It's a it's a baby beard. Actually, um, when we found out we were pregnant, I told my wife, I go, you know, you grow the baby and I'll grow a beard and we'll call it even. <laughs> no, no, I'm not joking. But uh, in all honesty, it was just kind of more of um, a reminder to um, all the hard work my wife is, is putting in each day to to take care of the unborn child and we're we're just really excited to to welcome this new bundle of joy coming up here in the next few weeks so as you can tell my brother's a sensitive one out of the two of us he's uh yeah. 
He's definitely the sensitive guy. So for, you know what, the interesting part there too is Harge. We've had this interesting competition between you and I. So Harge's, Harge's look is, Nathan, you've seen, you've seen the movie 300. Yeah. Right? The Spartan look. Mm -hmm. That's what he's going for. So we, it's funny because he'll send me pictures every once in a while in terms of his workout routine. I'll, I finally started sending him some of mine. I didn't want to scare him. But, you know, I sent him some of my pictures. And so we have this friendly banter back and forth. But I think that's part of brotherhood. Nathan, you could probably chat about this too. But Harge and I have this friendly competition. But I can tell you that on my side, there's no real competition. Not meaning that I don't feel like, you know, I, I'm the winner. But I just, I just don't have that drive. But I'm, I'm happy to see that drive in him because he's very much competitive. And I think it helps him out overall to uh, want to beat his older brother out a, a little bit. Yeah, I think there's a lot of truth in that. And, and uh, you know, when you're, when you're second out of the womb, life is a competition. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I, and I say that as a compliment to, to my older brother, um, and meaning that it's not, it's not the satisfaction of trying to win or anything like that. It's the journey, right? So you, as a younger brother, you look up to your older sibling, you know, whether it's a, it's a brother or a sister. Nathan, you, I'm not sure if, were you older than your brother or, or younger or? I am the oldest in my family and we definitely had the sibling rivalry competition thing. Me and my brother were always uh, competing against each other, but I always felt like it gave us an advantage. It gave us the, uh, the iron sharpens iron type of thing that I think um, people that are born, guys that are born without it or, or that don't ever have a brother, I don't think they get that same uh, advantage in life that a, a guy with a brother gets. I totally agree. And you know, if you don't have to have um, a biological brother too, it could be a best friend or, you know, a, a coworker or a colleague or, or something of that nature. But I, I totally agree with you. You, you. you do need some healthy competition in your life. And, you know, maybe at times it was unhealthy from my perspective. <laughs> I think pretty sincerely attest to that. But, um, you know, as you get older and you mature, you start to realize that you need different motivators in your drive. And, you know, just kudos to my older brother that he's just been very successful in anything that he's touched, whether it was his career, his business, a uh, family man, uh, physically, you know, he, he was a personal trainer back in the day. So I just kind of looked at it in, in sense of, well, you know what, if, if he can achieve this and if I can, you know, get to that level or, or surpass him, that's, it's an accomplishment in a journey, but never, never do I ever take, um, pride in saying I'm better than you're in an back because I, I know that's not the right way to compete. So it's more of a motivator than anything. I'm going to ask both of you guys' opinion on this. Today, competition seems to be frowned on. It's a lot of people think that competition is a bad thing, that it brings out the worst in us. Uh, we have the everybody gets a participation trophy uh, mindset. And I've even heard participation be called like part of white supremacy, patriarchy, oppression, systemic, uh, everything that's wrong with the world. And I personally, I'm thankful for all the competition that I had with my brother. Um, you guys are now, uh, Pradeep, you have a son and, and Hanji, you're about to start raising a kid. Um, what are your thoughts on the, on the negative, the negative, uh, the negative thoughts people have about competition nowadays. It's interesting you say that because I'm going to say out of the two of us, Harge was probably the more competitive person overall because he played soccer and he was actually really good at it. I was more, you can say, self-oriented when, when I, in growing up. So I didn't have as much of that competitive drive that he did. I can tell you that his drive was very strong and actually was uh, very good for him from a soccer perspective because he would go in and I would just see him in terms of, he was known as a guy who would take people out in soccer. I'm like, dude, this isn't football. This is soccer, right? He'd go Everything in there full clean. <laughs> <laughs> and, and whether it was a, you know, head ball, whatever it was, he was in there. And I could tell you, I, there's a running joke that we have. Harge visited the hospital, the emergency department, more than Tim the Tuman Taylor, because he was always in there with concussions mm. or whatever it was, because he was constantly competitive he is probably if i was going to say in my family or people that i know probably the most competitive person i know 
So I can say that it's helped him out quite a bit. Um, Harj, I'm going to throw it over to you, man. Uh, yeah, I want to get to, to, to Nathan's question there, you know, you know, with respect to participation, you do hear a lot about that. I think there's some pretty high profile NFL players saying that, you know, they don't want their kids being handed out ribbons because it makes no sense. You, you know, you rewarded them for just trying. And um, so I'm kind of mixed on that feeling. Um, you know, I read the book Mindset and it kind of, it takes the approach of trying to reward someone for the effort as opposed to the end result. So rather than congratulating your child for coming number one, you say, you know, I want to congratulate you for giving your best effort. So I, I, I do feel that uh, participation in giving your best effort is, is important. But at the same time, too, do, do, do you reward someone for giving? How do you measure the effort? And I don't think you should just go, you know, carte blanche and just give everyone a ribbon for an effort. It, it needs to be an applied effort for sure. So anything depending on the circumstance or, or whatnot um it, it is very interesting you know back in the day you'd run a relay and you whether you first finished first or last you got a ribbon um but i'll tell you what back back in those days and probably even today if you weren't first you were last mm -hmm. so yes reward the effort but also i think you need to distinguish what what the right effort is as well yeah i think we as as guys right this up uh, this podcast is all about for guys we have it built into us it's inherited us it's inherent in us to compete and i'll just give you one uh one study where they showed the level of testosterone for two teams for example the team that won versus the team that lost or even if you were watching an event where your team won versus your team lost is that is that the guys who either won or were watching the team uh, their team win had more testosterone so that actually shows you that we have it built in us. It's, it's actually part of us to compete and it's part of us to win. Um, Nathan, just to touch on that question again, is I think it's, I think we're just too soft on kids, man. We joke around in all honesty too. My brother laughs because I have a son who's super sensitive um, and not that that's bad, right? I was sensitive as a younger kid as well, but uh, he jokingly says, my dad actually said that too, before he passed away was, you gotta, you gotta toughen this kid up a little bit because he was just, you know, he'll just scream at the, the littlest things. He, he doesn't have, or oh, he didn't have that drive at that time. Um, but it's interesting because you see different people with different personalities. I would personally like to see him have a little bit more drive. I would like to see him have a little bit more competition in him. Um, but can I force that in him? No. Um, can I encourage him to do that? Yeah. You know, him and I have some friendly competitions when it comes to we go out there and he he does a little bit of the workout with me. And so we have fun from that perspective. But I also know it can be unhealthy, man. When you see those videos of those, those sports parents, you know, fighting or beating each other up or actually beating up some of the kids, <laughs> man, that's some scary crap. That's where you go a little bit overboard, right? <laughs> Yeah, and if and if, uh, and if I can pose this question to you, do you think that competition is kind of more nature versus nurture? You know, there's a lot to be to be said in terms of what your birth order is, but also kind of um, do you genetically inherit that? And I can definitely say, as being the second one, uh, I think it has a lot of truth in it that um, you know, if I did have a younger sibling, then you know, perhaps there could have been more competition. Um, coming from from underneath as well so I only know my perspective of, of being the second born but it's it'd be interesting to kind of see um, your guys' thoughts on that do you, do you think it's more nurture or or, or nature in that perspective Nathan, think, what do you think of that I think Pradeep you kind of hinted at it when you're born and you don't have a sibling that you're looking up to and, and trying to compete with at first, you're probably going to be less competitive. I was always less competitive than my little brother was. He came out and he was always like, oh, I've got to be as good as my big brother. I didn't have that for the first few years of my life. So it didn't get drilled into me. It wasn't part of like the way that I grew up. Um, so I, I, I've, I kind of relate with you, Pradeep, on this. I, I wasn't nearly as competitive as my little brother was. My little brother was just like, all the time trying to prove himself and i was just like yeah it's i'm good enough it's cool <laughs> i think it's different too as a first child or older brother you're, you're battling more the parents than your actual sibling right because you're trying to break out there you're trying to do different things and so that that for me was the bigger struggle um uh, we also have so harj and i we grew up with 
three brothers who lived across the street. Two of them were twins and then they had an older brother. So we are, the five of us are like uh, inseparable. We just have this bond that, you know, it's incredible to have. But even within those brothers, like I could, I remember when they used to fist fight each other, like literally fist fight. Harge and I, we've never really fist fight. I think Harge came, came after me a couple of times um, in his early, tw- I think maybe once, tw- one I can remember for sure is when I pissed him off, we went out one night and he had, which car was it, Harge? I can't remember which car you had. Was it the Acura it was, that you had? It was my 2001.6 Acura EL. And I was just, we were out one night and then we had a couple extra guys or one extra guy. And he's like, you know, I can only fit five guys in there. And uh, I can't remember what I said. I said, why don't you just go home and screw your car or something? And he, uh, he didn't like that very much. And he came up, I just, I just turned my back. And I remember this because of our, our buddies jumped in and he was just, you know, he was feeding me a couple, but you know, it's funny when you look back at those moments, because it's, it's, it's comical, you know, when you're in that situation, it's obviously not fun. But when you look back, you're like, you know what, the stuff that we used to do as brothers or whatever. The one thing actually, now that we talk about this, I, I feel bad because I wasn't the best brother growing up. Definitely not because I used to make fun of him. I used to say that he was adopted at times when he used to piss me off. I'd be like, you know what, you're adopted. <laughs> you don't look like any of our parents. So I was kind of mean from that perspective. The DNA test is still pending. Yeah. So we, we, you know, we, I, I could say I was not the best brother by any means. And we used to Harge because Harge was considered, they used to call him Mr. T and they called him Mr. T for a reason. Cause he was like, when he was, when he was a younger kid, like two or three, he was like a tank. I got to show you his pictures, man. He was like super cute. Like the cutest. I'm not just saying this cause he's my brother, but he was such a cute kid, but then he was kind of thick at times, like not not overweight, but thick. So we used to get him to do all the stupid stuff that we didn't want to do. So I used to take, you know, firecrackers apart and take the powder and be like, Harge, go light that. And I remember one time he went and go and he and lit that and he actually burned his eyebrows almost off, like completely off. Or we'd set up these, these, these ramps and for, for rollerblading and be like, Harge, you go test it out. And I remember he actually cracked his wrist once because it was just it was just not a good ramp and uh you know he was kind of like our guinea pig he's the guy that we kind of made do all these things that we didn't want to do and hearts maybe i should apologize i don't know if i formally apologized before but i think it's Uh, made you tougher i think it's made you pretty damn tough yeah i I look at it from the opposite perspective i think uh, (laughs) as as nathan said you know steel sharpens steel and uh so although it wasn't uh uh, pleasureful ha- breaking your wrist and losing your eyebrows at such a young age but I think it gave me a competitive advantage because as I looked up to these four I considered them brothers four older brothers I always looked at it to say hey if I can compete with people three four five years older than me then people in my age group should be no competition that I should just be able to blow past them so I, I've always looked at it as as an advantage of course when you're playing tackle football and you're five and they're ten uh, those tackles hurt but um, no you don't need to formally apologize I kind of just assumed you you meant that during all those tormented years <laughs> but um, it's funny you, you bring up a memory about uh, early 20s and this and uh, your perspective is a little bit different from mine um, yes I'm a little bit more serious and part of being a little bit more serious is safety and uh, I was just trying to be a good brother slash designated driver to a group of you know, overly intoxicated, inebriated men. So, um, you know, whatever perspective you look at it, but you, the thing is you grow from it, right? If you haven't had a fist fight with a brother, then you probably have only ever been told to do it or you've always agreed on everything. And I, I don't think that's how relationships work. You're going to need to challenge each other. You're going to need to have a disagreement. And sometimes hormones blow over and you, you chuck a couple, but it's better to chuck them in your younger days because I'd hate to see us two 40 year olds fighting right now. Yeah, that's, that wouldn't be fun, man. That would definitely not be fun. Um, Hard. I don't know if you, you know, but Nathan actually, uh, him and his brother were, Nathan, did you actually create a record label or were you? Yeah, that was, uh, that was my first business. Up until then, I was a hardcore leftist it's almost socialist. And then uh, me and my brother decided to start a record label because that was his passion. And um, 
then I ended up on the other end of my tax economic ideas. And I was like, Oh, wow, this sucks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, started a business with my brother. And I, again, that, that competition, I think is what drove most of that business and, and most of my decisions during that time period and um, missed the crap out of my brother. He passed away pretty young, uh, drinking and partying bad lifestyle and um, ended up passing away from liver cirrhosis at 29 years old, but um, st still think of him as probably my best friend ever and uh, feel blessed to have him in my life. Yeah, man, I, don't, I can't imagine what you're going through as an older brother. I just, I, I wouldn't even want to think of that day, uh, but having the strength to be able to get through that is, man, that's, that's tough. It's, it's amazing, you know, when you're growing up, you, you kind of take your siblings for granted a little bit. And then you realize when you're older, especially the distance, because Harj and I are five provinces apart, basically on the other side of the country, as you asked us prior to starting this episode. But I've had this massive respect for Harj. I can tell you that out of the two of us, this this guy, I always I, I jokingly say he's he is the the straight guy. He is the ethical guy. He's the guy that you go to when you need anything because he's He's got his head on straight, you know, definitely, except I have to say this when Black Spider-Man comes out. So that joke is that, you know what, you give Harge a couple of drinks and he lets loose a little bit. Uh, so whenever we want to get him to party, we just we just pour him a few and away we go. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's not just through drinks. It's through a couple of creatine shakes as well. But, um, no, you're right. And uh I think everyone's kind of got their their own alter ego, if I can put it that way. I think, um, you know, growing up with an older brother and kind of in a competitive landscape where I felt most comfortable uh, was in sports. You know, we grew up with, with a father that uh, battled alcoholism his whole life. And where I felt most comfortable was in that competitive landscape. And if it was a soccer field or a basketball field, that was almost my alter ego. It was my way to, to escape and to escape troubles at home, to escape bullying, racism, whatever it was. As a young child, you don't have the mental tools to have that level of awareness, but you kind of escape to this altered reality. And, you know, my brother calls him Black Spider-Man, but really what Black Spider-Man is, is just the confidence that I had in these certain areas that I just wasn't able to show 24 hours of the day so maybe from the outside looking in it it looked like an alter ego but really it was like it was my game face it's like hey, you know it's on and it's an equal playing field and I'm going to give it everything I got and if you can take it and still stand great and give me everything that you got and I'm going to get up more times than I fall so you know to kind of give you a little bit of perspective of what or who Black Spider-Man is um, it kind of stems from just early childhood of of, of just trying to find in an escape to some of the troubles you see at home. That's awesome, man. So you know what, we're going to have, we're going to continue this conversation for sure. Um, but for those of you out there listening, if you want to see my brother, go to YouTube for men.com. He's a guy that's got the, like the wicked beard. Um, you know, he's like, you got it. You got to grow one. I'm like, if my wife actually liked it, I'd grow one in a second, man. So I like getting my nookie. So I'm going to keep my face shaved a little bit. Um, but you know, go check out YouTube for men.com or, uh, mailpodcast.com and, and, uh, tune in for our next episode. All right, man. Um, right. thank you hard for coming on. It was an awesome conversation. We appreciate you giving us your time and until next time, we will catch y'all later. Pleasure meeting you, Nathan. Pleasure meeting you too. Right. Hard to stay on for a sec.